Welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we discuss knives for city dwellers. Today, we're going to have to look at the James brand, the Ellis, and see if it makes for a good urban EDC knife. The James brand is an American company best known for the emphasis on design. And this is a company who really understands and knows their audience. And they produce products just for that target audience and no one else. And I think that target audience is the urban EDC crowd. Now, this is reflected in their design, their visual aesthetic, and their marketing material. You can see the packaging right over here, very simple, uh, but very handsome and exquisite. Uh, there's a sleeve with a window cutout. And over here at the back, you can see some product information. The knife that I have is the OD Green Micata Scales with a stainless steel blade. And to open the box, there is a pull tab over here. And there's nothing inside. And there's a reason for that. That's because I use the knife as my urban EDC. So it's my everyday carry and I've got a lanyard on it. And that's why it wouldn't fit back into the box. But uh, just imagine without the lanyard, it fits in just nicely. And this cutout is actually made of wood. In other models of the James brand, I believe uh, most of them are unfinished wood. So it's plain, looks like pine. But this one is all black. And the packaging is fully recyclable, which again, I think it's important for their target audience. And over here, we've got some product information. So you can see very well thought out packaging, uh, very nice. Uh, and I think this is a more expensive item and I imagine some of this money has, goes into the packaging. This knife is a slip joint knife, meaning it has a non-locking blade. And the blade itself has a straight edge as well as a serrated edge, uh, just under half of the blade, which makes it, uh, I think, pretty good, pretty versatile. This is actually, in a way, a multi-tool because besides the main blade, there's also this pry bar or maybe a very large screwdriver, though it is quite thick at the end over here, but there's also a pair of scissors. What's great about this pair of scissors is this is the most robust pair of scissors I've ever seen in a folding knife of this nature, and that makes it really good. Uh, and one of the reasons why I like this knife a lot. Now, I'd like to give a shout out to John Gadget, and I'm linking his YouTube channel in the description. He's the one who kind of turned me on to the James brand, the Ellis. Now, before we get into the specs, let's uh, do some comparisons. So I'm going to compare with other slip joints, and of course, we have the classic Victorinox Swiss Army knife. This is the Spartan, but uh, with these walnut scales. And you can see the... James Brand Ellis, slightly larger than that knife, although the length almost about the same. We also have the Boca Tech 2 1, and oh, this is the Boca Plus Tech 2 1. And uh, I reviewed this knife, you can check out the video of this as well. This is a slip joint, also about the same size uh, as the Ellis over here. Let's show another slip joint. This is slightly larger, but this is the Sisivi. Civivi, I mean the Civivi Trailblazer. You can see that is actually a larger knife than all of these. And finally, as usual, an Altoids tin. Let's have a quick look at the specs for the Ellis. The blade length is 2.6 inches long. The cutting edge is about the same as mentioned earlier. It's a half and half blade with a straight edge and a serrated portion. There's also a sharpening choil over here. There is an oval cutout shape, and this is for you to grip the knife to deploy it. This is not a one-handed opening knife. You require two hands, but it's easy matter to grip that to open it. And this has a very nice half stop, very pronounced. And uh, the back spring for this knife is good as well, so you can use it. Of course, you have to use it safely as a slip joint because there's no locking mechanism, uh, but this is pretty good. You do need to put a, a bit of pressure of this. It's, uh, it is pretty safe. The handle length is 3.5 inches long, and the overall length is 6.1 inches long, and the weight is 2.8 ounces. The blade itself, this is Sandwick 12C27 stainless steel. So this is a popular budget stainless steel. It's manufactured by Sandwick AB, a Swedish company, and this is one of the steel grades under the Sandwick family, consisting of 14C2 8N steel. So what makes this particular blade steel popular for knives? Well, because it offers excellent wear resistance, corrosion resistance, and high hardness, all the properties that make a good knife steel. So 
For what it is, I think this is a great nice steel and it would be really good for your typical urban EDC tasks. So the blade grind. Now they say it's a flat grind, but you know, it looks like a hollow grind, feels like a hollow grind to me, but whatever. The style is drop point, satin finish, and uh, it's a slip joint as mentioned earlier. The scales OD green Makata. Now you can get it in different uh, scales, different configurations, and even the blade uh, finishes. So you can get, for example, uh, green scales with a black blade. Uh, and I believe the even the scissors blade. So all the metals are coated black. Uh, you can now get this with a black G10 handles and with two options for the blades. You can get the half and half blade or you can get a complete straight blade. Um, so many different, I think four different choices for you to choose from to fit you know, your particular style and your preference. The hardware on this talks eight. So this is great actually because uh, many people don't like the Tox 6 including me because they tend to strip out, uh, they're smaller. Uh, these are all eight which are great and they're just two rivets or two screws holding them down. Uh, there is a deep carry pocket clip and this is just a wire clip and it's not uh, reversible. right? So it's just tip up carry. And let's have a look at the scissors once again. So the scissors itself. I believe made from the same steel and this is the mechanism so it's quite different now this is one of the reasons i like this particular knife say over the victorinox scissors and we talk about the, just the scissors so this is the standard scissors this is from the climber but many knives have the scissors and this is kind of right the standard for knives in a folding knife okay what i like about this better is it is larger slightly larger the material is definitely thicker, so it's more robust. And finally, the kind of the mechanism, this uses the spring, which can break and needs to be replaced. Uh, this really works very well and it's you know, built into the slip joint actually, which is really nice. So from that design perspective, from the materials for the thickness, the robustness, and this has this folded over metal, which acts as kind of a, a stopper or a place where you can put your thumb to really press down to cut into material. So for that reason alone, I think this pair of scissors, you know, really beats out the Victorinox scissors. So that's so much about the specs. Let's talk about the price. And this is where it could be a deal breaker for many. So this particular knife costs 119 US. The new one, which has the black G10 and the straight edge blade or the half and half blade, that's I think 109 US. So that's really expensive compared to, let's say these two knives, the Boca Plus Tech 2 One and let's say the Victorinox Spartan. It's more than double the price. So I can imagine a lot of people being very hesitant to buying this particular knife because of the price. Because of the blade steel they get, they'll be thinking they can get, you know, this is over $100, which means it's no longer a budget knife, but you're getting budget blade steel. So, you know, why buy this when you can get, you know, a knife with better blade steel or you can get a knife which is, you know, 40% the price of it. So that's why I mentioned uh, the James brand really understands their audience. So their audience is probably the sort of audience who's willing to pay a bit more because of the design, because of the functionality that it uh, offers. And I think for this particular knife, what makes it unique from other multi-tool slash knives out there is the functions it has, right? It's just got this blade. And if you like the serrated as I do, because you now you have options uh, for different material to cut, uh, and you have that pair of scissors, which is a really good pair of scissors. You do have this pry to here, but I think most people won't really be using it. I think it's a bit shallow, uh, but who knows, right? But really, I think it's these two main tools uh, that make it what it is, right? And the quality, of course, is good. Now, if you compare this to the Victorinox, if you want to get the scissors, you will need to get something uh, like this, right? So this is thicker because you do have the additional bottle openers and can openers, as well as that small blade over there. Uh, and then if you get the Boca Tech 2, again, if you're on the scissors, it has to be the bigger one. If not, then it's just this profile. So you get this kind of a slim profile, but you get two tools and good tools uh, at that. And if we want to do a few more comparisons, uh, let's talk about the knife itself or the blade itself, because I mean, this is a knife we should compare the blades. 
So if we talk about the blade steel, which is 12C27, good quality budget steel, uh, this actually wins over the Victorinox steel, which they use. The blade is also thicker than the Victorinox. And, you know, I sometimes actually, honestly, when I use this, and this was really my EDC for decades, just like all of you guys, always had a Victorinox or a Swiss Army knife on you. I did find that for certain tasks, and if I'm cutting to something hard or a bit sticky, I do feel flex for the blade at times. And, of course, it does have a pretty good uh, back spring, but this has a stronger back spring, in my opinion. So that beats out that from the blade perspective. Uh, with the Boca Tech 2 One, which I did review, and I do believe this is a really good urban EDC as well, uh, for this particular uh, Tech 2 One, the blade is actually slightly thicker uh, than the LS, just very slightly thicker. But due to the grind, Right now, this is a flat grind, obviously. This, they say is a flat grind, but to me it's a hollow grind. But if you look right at the tips, this actually has, just the way, because of the way it's ground, this has a stronger tip, right? So I, I, I like that too. I'm like more unlikely to break on, on me. So for you know that reason, this knife really fits me well, uh, more than the other knives. Uh, and so in terms of a price point, I'm willing to pay for this because it serves my needs for what I need uh, in an urban EDC. But I completely understand if you find that it's overpriced. As that is one of the criticisms of the James brand. Let's talk about how to carry this knife for everyday use. Obviously, it's small enough to fit into your pocket. Uh, you can use the deep carry clip and clip that into your pocket. I personally uh, carry this every day and I use an EDC pouch and this is by Fox EDC. You can see it's pretty used but that fits in there perfectly with my other items. Uh, this is an Olight IT5 and we've got the Zebra extendable pen over here. And for me, this is a great compact way of carrying everything. It fits flat into my pocket. In fact, when I put it in, I almost don't even feel it's there. There is some weight to it, but you know, no more than I think a, a smartphone. So this goes into one pocket, my smartphone goes into another pocket, and I do have a money clamp as well. Uh, but this is how I carry it. Uh, here's a, another EDC organizer, and this is the art company's um, Rambler. So this obviously can fit in as well because the size uh, was designed for, you know, even bigger knives. But if I were to put this in, that can go in here and I still can put in my Olight. And there's even space for the pen as well. I could slip that in here, I believe. Yeah. So that's a pretty flat package as well. And that's why I had the lanyard just makes it easier for me to pull out the knife uh, from the holders when I need them. So the golden question is, does the James brand, the LS, make for a good urban EDC knife? You probably already know my answer because this is my everyday carry. For the functionality, materials and design, I think it makes for a great knife. But as mentioned earlier, if you feel that $100 or more than $100 is too much to pay for this, then you probably wouldn't think so. But you could maybe get it secondhand or you could do a swap with someone uh, for knives that you don't have and someone's willing to exchange uh, that with you. But let me know in the comments, will you pay more than $100 for this knife? Will you use it or do you use it as an urban EDC? Let me know and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you like the content, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And as always, keep it folded, keep it safe.